Hello, Marissa Schwartz here, and no, it is not my birthday. The balloon is because we are celebrating Gen Z's one year anniversary. Air horn effect! I probably could have added in an air horn sound effect, but that sound is really annoying, so we're just gonna stick with saying air horn sound effect. Uh, so, if you're listening to the Gen Z podcast, welcome. If you're watching this, hi! For those of you listening, I'm waving. To the camera um hi so we're celebrating one year of gen z which is incredible because one year ago it was really it was me and me going to my dad who is an entrepreneur and saying dad i want a business i have a business idea what do i do um and you know just kind of starting it from there so it, gen z if you don't know the origin story sit around children open your comic books this is the origin story of gen z publishing Issue one, part one, the amazing Gen Z. Anyway, um, it started because in, well, actually I'll go to the even earlier origin story. In high school, I self-published a book. I enjoyed it, sold copies, a few copies to friends and family. It was fun. I got to say, I published a book, but that was it. In high school, uh, in college, I actually um, wrote a book, this book, with plenty of stickies in it from readings. And um, I got published by a publishing company, VIP Inc. Publishing. And a lot of my peers and classmates and friends said, how did you get a book published while you're only in college? Like, I wrote a book, I'm an English major. I was an English major, not a barista. And um, my, my friends would say, how did you do that? I wanna publish my book. And I didn't have a real answer for them of where they could publish their books because I was incredibly lucky to get my book published. So um, I, my idea was to start a company where people like my friends, these really talented young authors and new authors could get their books published, have the work seen and read where otherwise it wouldn't be seen and read. Um, and you know, change the world with their innovative ideas because there are a lot of new ideas out there that they're writing. So that was the, uh, how Gen Z, the idea for it came about. And uh, I, I started it well, I started planning for it last uh, summer of 2015, but I actually launched it in November, hence the origin, uh, the anniversary being in November. I launched it in November and uh, I launched it, just kind of started my website and said, hey guys, I have a publishing company and uh, to play it safe, I wrote a book um, writing for the new generation. I thought, well, if we don't publish any other books, at least we'll have my book. You know, I, I wrote this just as a guide to writing. Um, you know, since I was an English major, since I did publish a book, since I did freelance editing, a lot of books in high, in high school and college, I thought, okay, I'll write this book, just kind of the basics, the guide to writing. And um, I, I put it out there with my new publishing company and thought, well, if anybody reads it, hopefully, you know, they'll like it, hopefully they'll want to publish with my company. And uh, I, I love social media. So uh, I, I started a massive social media campaign just saying, hey, I opened this new publishing company. We're looking for new, talented, young and innovative authors. If that describes you, send me a query letter. Well, I didn't expect to actually get some query letters so quickly. I mean, by December, we were all, I was already editing and working on the cover for the first books. And I'm like, whoa, this thing might really work. But at that point, it was just me and a couple authors. And those couple authors were, um, we had Mr. Peary, K.W. Peary, one of the best poets of our day. Um, he's incredible. And when I got his query letter, um, he said that he was a musician with the Marshall Peary Band. So I went on to Reverb Nation, listened to his music. And I swear, I must have listened to his songs a good 20 times in those days. And I made my friends and family listen to them also. Um, life's too short. It, it just, oh my gosh, I, I just can't ever get that song in my head. It's amazing. Um, so I, I, we published, his book was the first one that we actually published and um, it, it's a collection of poetry and they're awesome and they're so highly rated. And the first book that we published, we published it in January and it became the number one bestseller for American poetry. How is that for the first book by another author that you publish? I mean, if that didn't encourage me to keep up with Gen Z, I don't know what would. 
So number one bestseller, it was, it was incredible. And then um, with Mr. Peary, we published Purgatory last month or in September, um, his second collection of poetry and lyrics. And we are now working on his third book because Mr. Peary is awesome. Uh, he's a good friend now. Uh, and I'm, I'm just so thankful that, you know, he was, he was our first real author, our first real book. And now look at, we have three books going with him. So um, at the, about the same time as I received Mr. Peary's query letter, I received a query from a young man named RJ. And uh, RJ wrote about vampires. And I got his query, I'm like, well, I like vampires, but gosh, if this is another Twilight, I, I really, you know. But uh, luckily, it's not another Twilight. His book is awesome. Um, it's actually, he has a whole series, but we published his book, Evanescence. And uh, it's a new, it's a vampire book with a twist. And RJ, he's he's just awesome. He He's one of those authors that is exactly what I had in mind when I started Gen Z. I wanted young authors who are innovative and so motivated and so driven. And my gosh, does that describe RJ? I mean, this, he is going to have his books made into movies one day because he's that driven, he's that motivated. He's gonna succeed it no matter what he does. Uh, you know, he went back to his old high school, talked to the kids. That's just the kind of person that RJ is. And he's going to be very successful and he deserves every ounce of it. And I suggest any um, fans of uh, vampire or fictional, um, like young adult fiction, uh, what do, uh, paranormal uh, books should read this. See, this is why my job is no longer creating the genres that these fall into. I, I know what the books are about, but when it comes to actually categorizing books, it's actually much more difficult than you would think to categorize the books by genre because so many of these books kind of defy genres. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit when we get to Cedric's book. Um, so then the query started rolling in and I remember when I had to write my first um, letter saying, I'm sorry, we can't publish your book. And it was really heartbreaking because I knew that I was potentially hurting somebody's feelings, um, dismaying somebody, breaking their dreams. You know, I, I, it was it was really hard. It was really, I, I hate doing that. But um, at that point, you know, we already had two books out and they were both really high quality and we didn't want, we wanted to keep publishing innovative authors and really good books. So I had to start being a little bit more selective with who we published. And uh, yeah, I, it, it was rough. But I've had to do that many times since then. We actually now can only publish 10% of the manuscripts that come our way. So unfortunately, I have to write a lot of um, letters back to authors saying, sorry, we can't publish you. And that's another thing. A lot of publishers don't write back to authors when they aren't publishing them. And I, I think that that's so cold and cruel. When I wrote my book uh, in college, I, I didn't just send it to VIP that wound up publishing it. I sent it out, to the query letter out to a good 30 publishers. And I heard back from a handful of them. And that just was so cold. So I think it's better to send an answer to somebody and say, I, I, I really appreciate you sending your query to us. I think that you did this, this, and this well in your writing. I think that this and this can be improved. And if you improve that, maybe we can talk in the future about publishing a manuscript. That That's what I think. And then uh, I got a query letter that was really refreshing from Cameron Grace. And he wrote a book that was poetic, but a collection of, um, new takes on like fairy tales and it was awesome and like yes we're doing this and he uh was very feministic in his writing and i'm like yes we're doing this we're publishing this so we published cam and grace's book and then he um introduced me to his friend bethany mctrust three and she wrote i want to know you which is another collection of awesome poems and here here was the part where i kind of fangirled out receiving my um queries from the two of them. They're both from the UK and I'm in America. And it was just like, oh my gosh, we have gone international. So that was like a, a little internal celebration um, when we published Cam and Grace. And then one day I was doing something. I wasn't on Twitter and I got a notification that I had a new message on Twitter and I had never gotten a query letter via Twitter before. But I did, and it was from Scott McGlynn. And um, normally I would be like, 
can you send an email with your query please but uh i read his his message on twitter and it was so personal and it was so heartfelt and it was about his experience being bullied for being gay and i was like we have to publish this i mean i so he sent his manuscript and i i read it and i mean i had tears in my eyes this this is such an incredibly touching book and uh it, it, it'll make you feel every emotion anger um frustration but also happiness that you know scott not, not to give away the ending but if you go on his social media you'll see he's a very happy and successful young man and you see that you know no matter how hard things get there's always a bright side so sorry spoiler alert scott is doing awesome <laughs> um so then actually my first month when we first started um i got just a lot of inspiration and uh, really nice messages from a man named Adrian DeBarros and he was just kind of like you know you do you Marissa I, I really like this idea for Gen Z you're doing great and it was really just a concept and idea at that point we didn't have books to back us up but Adrian was a supporter right from the beginning and uh, then I got a query letter from Adrian a few months later and Adrian writes writes comedic poetry and I was like yes this is awesome we didn't have any comedy books at the time we had poetry collections but nothing quite like this adrian he's he's a wordsmith he takes uh the the ideas of prose and poetry and kind of turns on its head and uh he, he's very funny and he jokes about real life issues and real life things um some things that we would find trivial like he'll he'll, he'll make fun of social media and stuff but in a good way he's he's awesome so Next, we had A Poet in His Art Pen by Adrian DeBarros. If you like laughing, check it out. Um, and then I got um, a query from Dr. Uzoma Nuosu, and uh, I'm like, this is cool. He, uh, he worked at NYU, which is almost where I went to graduate school. Before I started Gen Z, it was pretty much Gen Z or a graduate school at NYU. So, I went the Gen Z path, still going to graduate school, but it's local. Um, so I'm like, wow, he, he worked at NYU, you know, it's, he's a doctor at NYU, that's, that's amazing. Um, and uh, he, he wrote to me in his query, Marissa, I've been to your website and I see your chi. Your chi is one of positivity and talent. And he said all these really nice things. I, didn't, I couldn't understand some of it because I had never really heard of chiology before, but I'm like, this seems really nice. So I, I looked up Geology. He has a whole website about it. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And uh, I, I love yoga. And his book was all about meditation and finding your chi through meditation. And we didn't have any guidebooks like this. We had no nonfiction guidebooks. We really only had poetry collections and then the one fictional RJ book. So I'm like, oh, and the memoir. Um, but nothing like this no guidebooks and certainly no non um six by nines all our books if you notice line up very nicely together they're all six by nine but this book in order for it to work for it to be a guidebook i had to make it an eight and a half by eleven so that is what we did and uh his book i think it's awesome it's royal igbu meditation and um yeah, different than anything else we had published at the time actually still different than anything we've even published uh, a few months later because when we published this, I believe it was like March. So, so then um, another poetry collection. But this time, if you've noticed a trend, I'm a woman. We published a feminist poetry book, but it was it was written by a man. I had no female authors, and I was kind of thinking, what is going on here? Are there, you know, I know there are plenty of female authors. I was an English major. We were all girls. What what is this? And then finally. An angel appeared, Carrie Dolan, with her book, The Bigger Picture. And um, I love this book. It's it's amazing. It's so inspirational. And Carrie prides herself on being an inspiration. And um, she, she talks about all kinds of issues that people don't often talk about, whether it is being mentally healthy or, uh, you know, standing up for yourself. She talks about it all. It's a really thick book. Um, even though it, it's written through letters and poetry. So in that way, it reminded me of my book, Notes Never Sent, which was the book that was published by VIP when I was in college, um, because my book was written in the form of letters mostly. 
and hers was very similar to that and she seemed she 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 is she's an absolute sweet person so she was our first female author yay carrie um Oh, but I, I know what you're thinking, Bethany McTrustery, um, but she came later. She came this summer. I was introduced to her, though, by Cameron, who we published in January, so I know that's confusing, but um, Carrie was our first female author. Um, so we, we kept moving along. Uh, we, you know, were having a lot of fun with those books. I was doing festivals and uh, bookstore readings. I did a couple readings at Barnes & Noble, a couple library readings, university readings so fun I mean that that's that's so fun like just reading in front of people and my favorite part is always the Q&A period people you know answering their questions interacting with the audience that's that's just so fun so um yeah I, I was doing a lot of that and uh, trying to grow it but it was still really just me and the authors so every book cover I did get a little bit of criticism on the book covers I'm going to uh admit as much as my mom and dad say your book covers are great I did get a little bit of criticism because the way that I was making them like this is a photograph that I took of the curtains with my hand opening them so that's a picture I took and I used my own Photoshop to kind of make it into a book cover and I'm not a graphic designer I was an English major but you know I, I like being creative so I thought okay I designed that cover I designed this picture um, I have this on my desk this is uh, my my candy bowl and I put a pen in it to snap the picture made the book cover so at the beginning I was making the book covers and um, as we began to evolve I started to hire some people to help us with the book covers and you know they they would take my picture and add effects to it make it look bigger make it look better so as we were moving along we were adding a little bit more and more people to the team just to uh, up our scale, make us more professional, make us, you know, um, I was the sole proprietor, make us into a company. So we're getting there, right? We're seeing this evolution over a year. Um, so the next book, or one of the next books, came from a man by the name of William F. Eicher. And he wrote a, a confession, which is one of the most brain twisty books I've read um I, I you know it's so weird to describe this book without giving too much away or to, to describe it without it sounding very bizarre but as a huge fan of um, things with twists and suspense this this book is this is awesome and a little bit of background about this book the picture that we used here that was an old picture my grandfather just moved and while he was cleaning out his attic he found this picture so we put it on the cover but actually bill william sorry i call him bill but on the book it says william so um that, that was i i don't know why i always am inclined to call him bill so every time we do a book announcement i'd be like bill eicher and then i get the message um can we use william f eicher so i'm sorry bill william i i just i don't know why i always want to call you bill um so yeah so William designed actually designed this cover which what an incredible job and oh my gosh we had so many issues with formatting though um this was still while I was you know before I had people helping me still trying to figure out okay how do I do every single part of these books how do I format it how do I do doing everything myself um but William was such a huge help he knew a lot about formatting and creating book covers and I learned a lot from him uh he actually he, he spent like a couple hours on the phone with me because he's been in business uh, for a really long time and he, he would just talk to me about my business that is like I mean what kind, that's an amazing relationship for an author and publisher to have because he knew at that point I had at, the company was only a few months old and he knew that every ounce of advice that he gave me and every ounce of encouragement that he gave me that it was really going to help and it did he, he was he was an awesome author he is an awesome author to have. So thank you, Billiam. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, oh, I'm skipping around here. Anyway, okay, now we're a little bit out of order, but um, I think it's because I always kind of put these two books together because they're both very different kinds of, uh, they're, they're very different from any other kind of book. They're both these uh, suspenseful types of books. This is by Dillian. Dillian. Uh, Dylan James Brock, it's Dry World, and it's like 
a romance book, but not really. It's so different. And I love it for that reason. Um, again, I'm, I don't like putting things in genres. I don't like class categorizing things, classifying them. So I'll just say read this if you like romance, but things with a twist, thrillery things, different things. This is your this is your book. I need a sip from my unlabeled water. No free advertising. <laughs> Until I open up my notebook, which has the notes of what I want to say. And it's a Kellogg's notebook. Kellogg's, not a sponsor. <laughs> so then came Jeff Thompson. And I don't know why I don't have his book right here with me. Uh, he wrote 13 Years of Dust. I thought I took all my books and put them next to me, but apparently I'm missing a few. Um, so 13 Years of Dust, it's like a detective story starring the one and only Duke Bradley. And uh, it's, it's like a throwback to kind of great detective stories of yesteryear. And uh, I love that book. It's, it's really different. And I know he has like a whole series of Duke Bradley stories. So I look forward to reading more of those. And by the, by the time we got to Duke Bradley, um, then I had my friend Daniel working, uh, helping us. And he was reading the stories and the books and uh, giving a lot of advice. And uh, he, he's awesome. So thank you, Daniel. Um, so by that point, we were, we were growing a little bit. We had, I was hiring some freelancers. We had Daniel helping. We had about a dozen authors. We're, we're in about April now on my mental timeline. I'm very into dates and remembering dates. Um, so follow along with me as I go through the dates in my head of the past year. So by April, we're moving quite, moving right along. So then I met the one and only Justin Fulkerson, who wrote um, An Hour for Magic, which is very, very different. When I say genre defying, I mean, this is genre defying. Um, he has uh, Houdini as a character in here. He has Jim Morrison as a character in here. It's like, it's crazy. It's really, really good. And then he wrote the sequel, Hallowed Be Thy Name. I'm creating the proof for it as we speak. So hold on, Justin, you'll be getting a proof soon. Um, that's the sequel to this. He has, It's a series. And uh, oh, he's also working. At... Justin, if you're watching this, I will be reading your other story that you sent me. I apologize, it's taking so long, I'm getting to it. Um, Justin writes nonstop, he's amazing with that. And uh, I, I, he's always sending me new stuff that he writes and I feel bad because uh, he sent this like a week and a half ago. I still haven't gotten back about it, but Justin, I will read it, I promise, it's, it's really good. Um, so that's Justin. Then we got, now this was a big step, we got our very first non-human author blundering o bloat or bob for short he is a fish who writes poetry who knew and he also sells beads i got a big envelope full of beads from him uh and it, so his book is the next 99 rhymes times and signs of blundering catfish mischief i still have to read that title because it's so long um but yeah it's 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 a really fun book it's really funny uh, and and he his emails are the most interesting part of my day because B, uh, Bob, wondering old bloke, writes in prose and they're hilarious and they're really fun. So if you ever want a pen pal, write to wondering old bloke, he'll be hilarious. So um, I skipped a few books, didn't I? Yes. So then I met Dr. Audrey Cup, EDD. And she wrote The Ties That Bind Us. This is not her final cover. I have, I only had her proof right here, um, but her, her final cover looks amazing. And she writes young adult fiction and it, it helps people to, uh, helps families. And uh, it, it reflects on having a military parent. And uh, it's, it's great. I love, I love Audrey's books. And Audrey is like one of the sweetest ladies ever. And I'm now talking to Audrey about publishing her other book. So, so then, so now we're in like midsummer, and that is when I began to really grow the team. So we got new beta readers, editors, people who are consistently designing our covers, formatting, 
and uh, interns. So a big thanks to Kelly, Becca, Sam, Molly, McClovia, Kara, Charlotte, Megan, Amanda, and Daniel I mentioned before. Um, that's that's the team now and they're they're so awesome and um, most of them are are students. They're like the age I was when I was publishing my book and working for the publishing company. Uh, you know, editing and freelancing, they're, they're that age. So these are the people who are going to be the next great generation to work on books. And uh, some of them I actually went to college with. And, you know, they were like a year or two um, younger than me in college. And it's awesome to work with them. Oh, also, um, website and social media work. I always did the social media and the website mostly by myself. Uh, but now they're helping out with that too, and it's awesome. So back to the authors. Um, we're go them. I'm I'm totally out of order now. But um, Penelope Aaron's inspirited young adult fiction. It's really cool. <laughs> Her tagline. She said, "Is this too cheesy? Stalkers and visions and boys. Oh my! No, it's not too cheesy. I think that's pretty fun. Um, and it explains what the book is. Uh, so." And Penelope Aaron, that's not her real name, but I'm not going to reveal what her real name is. <laughs> um, yeah, she's, she's so sweet and her book is awesome. And she's written other books. I, I, she had them published before she came to us, but uh, she's always doing book festivals and book fairs. I'm always seeing pictures of her kids with her books and it's so cool. She's, she's awesome. I need another swig of my non-identifiable water. And then Preston Marshall, um, he wrote, this book is hilarious. It's not posed as a comedy book, but he writes his characters so believably. They're young adults and uh, they're faced with the apocalypse. So as you can imagine how immature people would kind of react during an apocalyptic situation. Reading this, I just, I laugh so much. It's hilarious. Um, but you see, his, his tagline for it, nobody can escape the war. Safety is a lie. The world is dying. And that's true. There is so much action and drama and just epicness in this book. And I always, but the thing is, I just always think of the characters and how much they made me laugh during this because, you know, there's an apocalypse going on. And they're just kind of acting like bros. It's hilarious. So, um, When Darkness Reigns by Pre uh, Precious, Preston Marshall. Pre Precious Preston Wow, that is a tongue twister. <laughs> when Darkness Reigns by Preston Marshall. Um, pick this up if you want a good laugh. And if you like like Walking Dead kind of stuff. It's not zombie stuff. But it's, you, you'll see. It's really good. Okay. Then we have Knights of Enmity. En Enmity. Knights of Enmity. I... Ugh. Don't even get me started on pronounce on how badly I'm pronouncing these people's names and titles. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, Knights of Enmity by Cedric Daniel. Uh, this is the Barons of Fallen. Now, when I said I don't like putting books in genres, this is the exact reason why. Uh, Cedric's book, it's amazing, by the way, but um, it's a fantasy book. And when you put a book in the fantasy genre, on Amazon apparently they market it to children because fantasy children well, adults can't read fantasy right who's ever heard of Game of Thrones so I put it in fantasy and her book got a lot of pre-orders and it wound up being a bestseller in wait for it the children's book genre well I get a message from Cedric oh my gosh kids can't read this this isn't appropriate for kids why is this in the children's genre I have no idea I'm like bracket my brains out. Okay, who did what? Who who thought this was a children's book? What happened? Took so long to finally realize. You know, you talk to Amazon to finally realize. Oh, when a book is classified as fantasy, it's a children's book to them. But um, we got started out. I said to Amazon, please do what you have to do. Get it out of the children's genre. This is not a children's book. So we got that all sorted out. Her book is awesome. Everyone loves it. Uh, it's. And look at that cover. That's really cool. Sedri designed that, by the way. She's very talented. Then today, oh uh, yeah, today we had this lovely 
book release. I think this book cover, oh, this is one of my favorites. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Um, E.I. Stripling's Internal Conflict. It's an awesome book. It's a, uh, it's like one of those kind of romance, but a little bit more types of books. Uh, I like it. And this is so sweet. She sent me a thank you card with the fruit. <laughs> I will cherish this forever, E.A. Her name is Liz. Liz, I will cherish this forever. Sorry, I gave away your name. Um, so, awesome book. Just came out today. Pick it up if you like romance books. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and th those are the books that we've released so far. I may or may not have left that a couple. I really tried not to leave any out, but I probably did. So as you can see, we've published a lot of books this year and we've grown a lot between the genres and the authors that we're publishing. And it, it's been a really, really fun time. And we have a lot more books on the horizon. Uh, I'm currently working with Brad Fares on his book Celtic, Celtic Cow Hunter. And this is different than any other book because he uh, has a lot of anecdotes in it. He has pictures in it, lots of really cool pictures. He's an artist, he's a lawyer, he's a cowboy. He does everything. He's like, it's it's amazing. He does everything. And his book really reflects that. So his book is one I'm so super excited about. Then um, in two weeks, we have Somewhere Only We Know coming out by Brie Marino. And uh, it's, it's a young adult book. And what struck me right away with this, and I wrote to Brie multiple times about this, she doesn't capitalize the word I. And I said, Brie, like, I'm thinking to myself, how, when she, actually, when she sent her query letter, I'm reading, I'm like, this is really good writing, but I learned in kindergarten, you capitalize the word I. Why doesn't she have the word I capitalized? So I wrote to her, and I'm like, why isn't I capitalized? And her answer just struck me. It was that the protagonist in this book does not have enough confidence in herself to capitalize the I. I thought, wow. That's beautiful. I think that is beautiful. She went a little bit more into detail, but that was the gist of it. And I'm like, okay, you're on the Gen Z team now. That, that, that's all I needed. That was amazing. And her book is awesome. Another soda water, pardon. I only have ever drank water on camera before, so that's a first. And if you're listening to the Gen Z podcast, I have been drinking water. I drank water three times already feels awkward drinking it on camera. I was taught you don't do things like that. You don't adjust your hair. You don't itch when you're on camera. I was taught that from a very young age, but <laughs> I'm defying the rules. <laughs> I am in some mood today. So, um, it must be, we, we, uh, I actually last night talked to two prospective new authors. So I'm very excited about those because both books are very different from any of these books that you see here, not to give anything away, but I hope you like coloring. <laughs> and then the other one's um, fiction and very different. But uh, so then to talk more about some of our upcoming releases, we have Believe What You Breathe by Galantine Miller. And uh, it's very, and I say this about every book that it's very, very different, but it is really different. How many books do you know where the protagonist is over a hundred years old? This guy is 106 and Galancy, I fangirled over right away because he is a writer for the onion and, uh, or the onion news network. And I've been a giant onion fan since I was like 12 years old. So right away, I mean, <laughs> before I even read his query, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't care. I'm publishing his book. This is amazing. And thank God his book was amazing also, because otherwise I would have just been like, I got a sign of he's a rare for the onion. But his book is just like uh, what you would expect. I mean, actually, it is a bit more serious than you would expect from an onion writer, not to generalize. But um, it's it does have its comedic moments and it is really good and really thought provoking. And I'm excited about this one. It's coming out in December. Oh, that's next month. It's coming out next month. And the final book I'm going to talk about, probably the weirdest book I've ever seen in my life. And that's why I had to publish it um, by Mark Chapman. It is called Complete Nonsense, a contemplation of the lettuce verbiage ensemble. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It's complete nonsense. It makes no sense. And that's why I love it. It's um he it's almost like poetic forms. He he writes these really cool 
I'm gonna call them poems, but they're not really poems, but he writes these really cool poems just out of words that sound good together, words that you don't hear together, very different words. Uh, Love on a barbecue spit fades with oyster gunk disappointment. Like weird stuff like that. But then you sit back and you read it and you're like, oh, that sounds really nice. I like that. So um, this is, I'm, I'm definitely stretching with this book. We're definitely stretching. This is something very, very different than anybody's ever published, but we're going with it. I, I love it. And I love his images that he's created. He created like that. And on um, the beginning of every chapter, we have a new image that he created. I love these collages that he created. They're so colorful. So that is Gen Z's year in review. Happy anniversary to us. Air horn noise. Um, let me see if I'm forgetting anything. Yeah, I, I think that that's everything. If you want to, so if you're watching this, you're one of three people. Either you're a Gen Z author and or intern and or team member working with and for us, uh, in which case, this is our story. You probably know it, but now you got to hear it from me. <laughs> this is our story, and uh, we're, I'm really happy to have you at Gen Z, and uh, thank you. Um, B, you're a loyal reader and or friend, uh, in which case, this is our story. And I want to thank you so much for supporting us. Um, anyway, Gen Z, we really appreciate it. And our number three, oh, reader or listener to the Gen Z podcast. Number three, you could have been brought here maybe by our press release or an ad or something and you didn't know what Gen Z was. I hope that now you have a good idea as to what Gen Z is. Definitely check out our website and social media also. We have a lot of fun on there, especially now that's just not me posting. You know, I post a lot of introverts who like to read do this kind of stuff because I'm an introvert who likes to read. So I do this and I think it's funny. Um, but now that we have a team, there, there's some, uh, we're, we're expanding our horizons a little bit and we also have a lot of new updates and stuff on our books, on our social media all the time and on our website. So check those out. And uh, just thank you to everybody for sticking around and supporting Gen Z. We really do appreciate it. And I hope that Gen Z is around for years and years and that every year we celebrate a new anniversary. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Gen Z. Thanks for listening. If you're listening on the Gen Z podcast, I'm Marissa Schwartz, the voice of Generation Z and the owner of Gen Z Publishing. You stay classy, Gen Z Publishing audience. <laughs> I've watched Anchorman too many times. Gen Z Publishing has many new releases coming out and people are excited. Spencer Durant's Learning to Fly is due out August 9. It's a real tearjerker. Also be on the lookout for Sedri Daniel's Knights of Enmity, Calix Lee Ray's Opaque, Penelope Aaron's Inspirited and more. Also, surely you remember just a few months ago when K.W. Perry's book, Tales of a Receding Hairline, went to number one on Amazon's hot new releases list, right? Well, now he has a new book coming out, Purgatory. Isn't that exciting? Also, be sure to check out some of Gen Z's recent releases like William F. Archer's A Confession. Dylan Brooks' Dry World, Jeffrey Thompson's 13 Years of Dust, RJ Rogue's Evanescence, Adrian DeBarro's A Poet and His Aaron Pen, Justin Ferguson's An R for Magic and more, all on the Gen Z website at genzpublishing.org. Well, hey there, folks. Oh, I've got to tell you, I love Gen Z Publishing. They have the best books. Out, Evanescence, Grace, ah, I can't stop reading them. Head over to GenZPublishing.org and check them out. Gen Z, Gen Z.
Well, good to burn is probably the biggest irony I can think of. The fact that the first literary work I produce that a publishing company or anyone else for that matter believes in um, is so weird that it's poetry. Um, I have this checkered relationship with poetry. It's almost like poetry was an ex-girlfriend that just messaged me every now and then to kick my head in or to shout at me for something, or I'd kind of developed an aversion or an allergy to verse. It's like it was bringing me out in a rash. But this was two or three years ago that I was introduced to poetry in a different way. I became a, um, a student at Northampton University and the creative writing element of my degree forced me to write poetry for modules, which is pretty much um, where Wood to Burn comes from. Um, a writer learning a new craft, uh, f uh, fresh eyes looking at the world and putting them down in his own way. Which is why I experiment with form and I use illusion a lot. It's, I, I try to, for me, Wood to Burn represents the old meeting the new and, you know, a slight transition into something else. Um, when Jens took my book on, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I was quite surprised um, for a start off, but I was thrust into this strange world of of a, more of a community more than anything. It's not like I was a, a writer hoarded up in some log cabin with a quill um, all on my own. It, it was um, an introduction to new authors who were keen on in, um, promoting my work and promoting their own. And we talk to each other, we communicate with each other and we share each other. We have each other's books. Um, Gens is not just a publishing company. It's a new group of friends that want each other to be successful and want each other to thrive. Gen Z Publishing gives a voice to some really incredible authors. These are authors who are forward-thinking, innovative, and above all, extremely talented. They've written a wide variety of books, from non-fiction to young adult supernatural thriller, to short story and poetry collections. Gen Z Publishing is now accepting submissions from more talented writers. Our words have the power to shape the future. Visit genzpublishing.org for more information. You have a voice. Share it. Gen Z Publishing. Gen Z, I'm so proud of what we're doing. Uh, we have a number of books coming out. We have poetry books. We have a supernatural thriller. We have a comedy. I mean, we have a lot of books coming out. We have my new book called Writing for the New Generation, which is a guide to writing. It's to help young people hone their craft and to gain the confidence that, yes, they can write worry-free. You can learn more about what we're doing at Gen Z at genzpublishing.org. We're also still accepting submissions from writers and learn about our criteria and how you can submit your work. Uh, like us on Facebook at Gen Z. Like us on Twitter at Gen Z Pub. And stay up to date on all our new releases. We have so many authors from all around the world. And that's something else that I love is that we're connecting so many people internationally. Um, RJ's from New York. I'm from New Jersey. We have another author from New York. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you have the authors in Europe that we're, we're publishing. And it's just incredible. And all these people uh, are so kind and so talented and really just grateful that they can do what they love which is writing and they're so passionate about it and I, I love that and I admire that because I'm the same way um, and I think it's a really great community so thank you so much for being part of Gen Z